Gerald. That's my name, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think that if you have any interest whatsoever in learning card magic, magic with regular playing cards, it would behoove you to learn how to do the overhand shuffle. It's a great place to start. Now, the overhand shuffle is a perfectly legitimate way to mix cards. I'll show you how to do the shuffle, then I'll show you one or two little things that you can do with it. But this is just the very, very tip of the iceberg. There's so much more. Here's the deal. Overhand shuffle, you hold them in the overhand shuffle position in your palm up left hand. It's these fingers kind of resting on the face of the deck. The index finger is curled over the front end like this. The thumb is at the back, okay? The right hand just picks up the deck like this. The two middle fingers like that. The index finger on the top like this. The thumb at the inner end. And the little finger really isn't used at all. It's just kind of there. Now the shuffle is actually this. You hold a deck here. Your left thumb takes a small block of cards. It doesn't matter how many. Sometimes it's only going to be one card. Sometimes it's going to be half the deck or more, depending on what you're doing. But just to do the shuffle, take a small block of cards with your thumb. Let it fall to the fingertips like this and then take another block on top of the first block, another block on top of that, and you just keep doing it. You are now doing the overhand shuffle. So that's a good way to mix up cards. Chop, 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 chop. That's all there is to it. Face up, it might be a little bit easier to see, but basically it's exactly the same thing. Small block of cards, a second small block of cards on top of the first one, the third on top of the second. You just keep going until you run out of cards, okay? That is the overhand shuffle. Now, what can you do with it? Oh. It would save time to tell you what you can't do with it because there's so many things. Let's say you want to get the top card to the bottom. Okay, in this case, the top card is the nine of clubs. All you do is you hold the pack in the overhand shuffle position. Your left thumb takes the single card, that would be the nine of clubs, off the top into the left hand. Then you shuffle all the other cards above it. So very simply, you've gotten the top card to the bottom. If you want to get the bottom card to the top, basically the same idea. You just take blocks and cards like this, block, 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 block. When you get near the end, you start taking them one at a time so that eventually what was originally the bottom card will end up on top. Here's a great little way to practice it. You could turn the card face up just to make sure you're doing it properly, but you shuffle the top card to the bottom, and then you can shuffle the bottom card to the top. So you do this over and over again while you're watching television or talking on the telephone, and before you know it, you won't even have to think about it. You won't have to look at your hands. You can do it with your eyes closed. That's a good thing to do. I used to do that at airports. I would close my eyes and practice my overhand shuffle stuff, and you always know where your card is. Now, we're going to use this as the key card. In fact, I'm going to show you a very simple trick. It's a great little trick, very easy to do, and it uses nothing more than a simple overhand shuffle and a key card. Now, a key card, in this case, will be the five of diamonds. I have gotten into the habit of always putting my cards in the box with the deck face up. The reason for that is as soon as I take the cards out of the box, I look at the key card. I see what the bottom card is. I hold the deck face down, I immediately shuffle the bottom card to the top. So now I know, even though I've shuffled up the deck, I know that that bottom card, the five of diamonds, is now on the top of the pack. Afterwards, I want it to go back to the bottom, so I shuffle it back to the bottom by taking it singly. By the way, here's a bonus tip. Bonus tip, no extra charge. If you want to keep the card on the bottom, and you don't really want to take the time and effort to shuffle it from the bottom to the top and then from the top back down to the bottom, you could do what is called milking the cow. Very, very secret technique. Here's what you do. You take your fingertips on the actual card you want to retain. Your thumb is on the top card. And you take all of the other cards with your right hand. So you're milking the cow. You're taking the top and bottom cards together. So that keeps the bottom card on the bottom. So you take them together, and then you shuffle after that, like that. So that's milking the cow. From this angle, it's on the bottom. You're milking the cow so it stays on the bottom. But look from this angle, it looks perfect. You're just shuffle, 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 shuffle. The five of diamonds is on the bottom. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. As much as you want. Really a great way to do it. So that's just another way to keep your key card on the bottom. Anyway, here's the trick. I guess I shouldn't have told you that I knew what the key card was. But you have a card selected, any card from anywhere in the deck. I won't look at it. I have no idea what, but I'll let you see it. So that is the chosen card. Now remember, I don't know what it is. And then you say, put your card anywhere in the deck. Just call out the word stop wherever you want to put it. So the spectator says stop. You say, put it in. They put it in. And you cover it up so their card is lost in the deck. Now that looks pretty fair, doesn't it? It's lost. No way. Now you say, I'm going to try something very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. And feel free to milk this moment. Oh, very difficult. Very difficult. You go like this. And then you say something like uh, 13. That's it. 13. Watch closely. 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll bet you that the next card I turn over will be the card you selected. 
And of course, people will be ripping their pants trying to get to their money to bet you. And then as soon as all the wages are on the table, you very calmly and very confidently go like that. <laughs> you turn it over. They, of course, expect you to turn over the 13th card. That's why you said the number 13. The way this is done is amazingly simple. You know the bottom card, that's your key card. So I'm going to use the jack of spades this time. Keep it in your mind, jack of spades, jack of spades, jack of spades. Don't say it. Don't move your lips. Only you know it in your mind. Now, when a card is selected, they can pick any card they want, uh, except the jack of spades. If they do take the jack of spades, make a trick out of it. Close your eyes, turn your head, say, concentrate on your card, and then apparently read their mind and tell them, you've got the jack of spades. But milk it, you know, you've got to milk it. You say, concentrate on the color, oh, 50-50 chance, uh, black, uh, concentrate on the suit, uh, spades, and a little bit at a time until you narrow it down to the jack of spades. Okay, so there's the jack of spades, there's the selected card. Once again, it's okay if I see it, because I'm going to find it anyway. When you shuffle the deck, remember the key card's on the bottom, it doesn't matter where they say stop, Whenever they say stop, that's exactly where you stop. They put their card back in the deck. And when you put these cards on top, automatically that puts the jack of spades, your key card, directly on top of the selection. Now what I do here is I guess. I look at the packet and I say, oh, that's about 11 cards. Just take a guess. Whatever number you think it might be, say 11 in this case, pick a number a little bit more. Like maybe you could say 15. But make it important. Say, okay, I'm very difficult. Concentrate. I'm getting psychic vibrations from the deck. And then you say the number 15. The reason for saying the number is you're going to count down, apparently, to that position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This is the fifteenth card. Now you make your bet. You say, I will bet you the next card I turn over will be the card you selected. Well, of course, everybody thinks you've already missed. You've passed it. That was the key card, remember? And there's the next card right there. So you say, are you ready? Are you ready? And then they think you're going to turn this over, you turn this one over, and you have yourself a fine, fine illusion of magic. It's a simple trick. I'll be the first to admit it, but it's a great trick, and I hope it serves you well. Thank you very much. I will see you next time on magicplace.com.